Have you ever wondered how to make $2,000 a month by writing about what you love, even if that is literally just stories about weird stuff that happened in your life while maintaining a full-time job, a regular life, a family, and even a son? Wonder no further because today I am interviewing the incredible, incomparable, fantastic Holly Bradshaw. She is revealing all her secrets, how she grew on Medium while maintaining a full-time job, how she's actually grown her following and her income from three to $900 a month, all the way up to $2,000 a month, what she writes about, how she finds inspiration, how she finds time to start. She's also doing a podcast, there's so much. And I took so many notes during this conversation, so I hope you get as much out of it as I did. All right, let's jump right in. Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to this uh, interview. I am so excited to be recording this interview with Holly Bradshaw, who, it's so cool because you're in a very different position from most writers in that you started writing when you went, when you went from freelance into a full-time job. And I know that balancing like a writing hobby and passion with not just a full-time job, but you also have like a family <laughs> to look after and hang out with and spend time with. And I would love to know, yeah, like how you got started on Medium, what, what, why you chose to do that right as you started going into your new job and everything else let's let's just start i was a freelance editor and i think maybe a lot of freelance editors can relate like my dream was to be a writer mm -hmm. and i was editing all these other writers and just looking at what they were doing but it was paying the bills kind of i'm different from you which you do this so wonderfully i just was really bad at managing my time on my own and being an employee with a business and like having to meet deadlines and work with a team that worked really well for me. Mm -hmm. so, so after four years of freelancing, I landed a job as a senior writer and project manager for this large corporate company. Okay. And it was really fulfilling and it gave me benefits and like things I had never dreamed of before. Sure, <laughs> and that yeah. was a huge accomplishment for me because I worked as a freelancer with no my only professional experience in writing or editing was my freelance business. Mm -hmm. So to that end, I think if you're freelancing and you want to move to a, a, a job job, it's totally possible. And at the same time, if the corporate thing and, and the day to day is not for you, you can take what you learn at your job and go into freelance like you've done. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing with writing for this, this company, it's a lot of like, medical research and, and fundraising for that and stuff like that it does not allow me to write whatever I want I have to write like very strictly to this voice to these assignments and and it's all very interesting but it's not like my material it's mm -hmm. not like what I want to creatively express and that is where medium came in so like after I settled into my new job two years ago it was over two years now mm -hmm. I just wanted to do something fun and creative for myself and also maybe find an opportunity to provide for my family better mm -hmm. because you know when you're starting a new job it it took care of me well enough but I have the massive student loan debt I have the medical bills like things everyone has I have a child who needs all these things mm -hmm. so I was like this sounds fun I want to create stories using a pen name so I can write and be like as honest and, mm -hmm. and like gory details as I want and um, maybe provide more substantial income. So it was so, all like, it was all good. <laughs> yeah. So I want to get into the, the time management aspect because I think that's something that's going to be really relevant for a lot of writers. But talk to me about those early days. So you're in this career, you're finding it, uh, yeah, financially fulfilling for sure. Getting benefits is great <laughs> love that um but then you wanted to write something more creatively and you found medium um how yeah how did you how did you pick the topics that you wanted to write about and how soon did you see success that's like that's a huge question um <laughs> because it was slow yeah it was slow at first and i i think the very first story i published it was for the writing cooperative yeah um the first three I published was for that. And some I incorporated like one of them was about like grammar and like 
mistakes that will harm your erotica writings because I love to write fiction and I so I think like incorporating stuff that I was really into into like the writing aspect and the skill of writing worked well at first um I say worked well I think I made six dollars my first month and, hey, that's, you know, I know a lot of people, I think I made $3 my first month and those dollars felt okay. so good. My secret was writing a story about writers that I loved on Medium. That was my first story and um, tagging them. And I, I don't know if that's a good like method. I think, that, I think that annoys a lot of people, but people read it and people appreciated that I was there to learn like what what writers are doing and, and what they're saying before I published. Mm-hmm. And I, I recommend that too. Like look around, definitely read um, mm-hmm. and incorporate that. So, and then I thought, do I have to have like, like that niche? Like, do mm-hmm. I have to do writing and, and, and sex stuff? Um, I definitely started with that. And then I s- eventually just got brave enough, I think to branch out and like, let myself fail if I, if I, if it failed. Yeah. Um, but it was definitely a slow build. I was maybe doing like one story a week or one story every two weeks for mm-hmm. like a good like six or seven months. Right. Yeah. So was there like a breakout article at the end of those six or seven months or was it just a slow build into finding your voice, finding your topics, finding your audience? It was it was a little bit of both. So I wrote something <laughs> that broke, did a little like, not viral, but like breaking out more and, and reaching more than any story before had. Mm-hmm. And it was um, like a, a chat conversation I had with a male friend about oral sex. And he was like asking me questions. And I'm like, this is interesting. It was platonic, but we were like discussing like skills. And he was like, honestly, like help me. And I'm like, let me try to like give you my opinions. And I wrote that story and that caught people's attention. It, I was, just, it was kind of weird and different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very weird and different. Yeah, not not in a bad way. Just in like definitely captures a lot of the audience of like what people want to read, but it aren't currently being served by. Yeah. And, and it's something like people don't necessarily want to talk about. Right. Right. It's like private stuff. Mm-hmm. But I'm that's I, I, I'm so interested in sex and like from a, a psychological standpoint as well. Like I would be like a couple sex therapist if I went to school for that. Yeah. It's something like it's a dream far off, but I just love like learning about it and writing about it and being a little bit different and, and being willing to go places that maybe not everyone is comfortable talking about, but, mm-hmm. but should be talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was kind of my running theme. So that was yeah. like the first breakout. And then I, I tried to like build on that, like, Oh, this is what people like. Let me see what I can do with that. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting because I find a lot of breakout articles for a lot of writers. They're not, they're not often viral ones, but they are ones that are like, oh, so I I can get more than, you know, a hundred views on a story. I can get a thousand or I can get 10,000. And even though 10,000 isn't like, it's not breaking the internet, it still shows you a lot of the potential that you weren't reaching before. So, okay. For those of you who are watching this and you're thinking you want to start building a side hustle on Medium, like Holly here, um, and you're wondering like what the potential is. Holly, what have your best months on Medium been in terms of income? Yeah, I'm I'm so happy to share about that. And I like I'm I'm very open and honest and I, I don't care to talk about the money. Um, I think it's it's helpful and I think it's interesting. I love reading like what people earn and what they do. But my best month was recently last month. So that was it was March. And we got it in April. That mm-hmm. was like 21, 2100. Wow. Okay. That was my best month ever. And then the month just before that was almost 2000. So I had like. Incredible. So yeah. like the and ceiling is high. Time. Yeah. And hopefully you haven't even reached the ceiling. Like this is just steps on the journey. <laughs> yeah. So I. um, Like I couldn't believe it. And what ha- what helped was having articles that did kind of break out and go viral. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and I I think it took me those two, it took two years of like, most of my months were three to 500. I mean, still, which was helpful. Yeah. Especially because you were saying that you were only writing really like 
four, maybe four, somewhere between two to four stories a month, right? Well, so not exactly. Well, that was the beginning. Right. <laughs> and then once like articles started to doing, uh, earning me a little bit more, that definitely motivated me. And I was like, when I'm more consistent than like once every two weeks, um, I'm more likely to just write a gem. So I, I honestly feel like I have to write maybe a few articles that don't do anything. And then I throw another idea out there and it does stick. It like, finds the audience. Yeah. yeah I, throwing dark into dark words. <laughs> yeah. I know how addictive it can feel when you start earning that money. I guess for you, it was different, but I, um, cause you had already been a freelance writer or sorry, a freelance editor. Um, but for me, like the first time I started writing um, and I started earning money from it, I was like, oh my God. So the more I do this, the more money I make, let's just, let's just yeah. do it. And I know that happens to a lot of beginner writers. So I want to talk about your experience specifically. You're starting to experience, um, yeah, that like maybe writing more starts to earn more. How do you balance that with your day job and your sort of existing life? Um, like not well sometimes, <laughs> not very not very well y'all. at all sometimes. Um, yeah, to be honest. Uh, one thing that was helpful, <laughs> and this kind of goes into where we can find other opportunities was that I, I joined up with Newsbreak mm. when that was happening. And mm. I was sort of like at the beginning of that and they required, the contract required three stories a week. And we were also allowed to post articles we'd already published. Mm. So the plan was like, I didn't have a huge backlog. I was like, I'm going to write three stories a week. I'm going to publish it on Medium first. Then I'm going to cross post it to Newsbreak and fulfill that contract. And just having to do that routine three days a week for four months, um, it was the most consistent I'd ever been as my side hustle. Mm -hmm. So like I'm at the day job, but then at least three times a week, I have to publish a story in my side hustle. And it was kind of like, um, it was like side gig writing boot camp, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's a great way it, to put it. Yeah, it forced me to have that routine. And then at the end of that four months, which it ended, you know, a couple months ago, I needed a break. And I was like, now I'm like publishing maybe like four stories a month this month. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's totally acceptable. And, and balance is great. Um, mm -hmm. So I will work and sometimes I will write for myself on my lunch break. Okay. Um, I will write for myself on the weekends, but maybe I'll only write on one of the weekend days because the other day I'm going to have fun and I'm going to spend time with my son. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe I'll stay up late probably more than often than I should on a weeknight. So like it'll be Wednesday night. This past Wednesday night, I was up till 2 a.m. writing for Medium. Did not realize that I did that because I'm just, I'm, I'm not a, great with routines as we know um so i'll stay up really late and just be sleep deprived the next day <laughs> or i'll i'll like take a nap during my lunch break the next day mm -hmm. like i just shuffle things around to the to where i need them to be yeah. and i i'm not like yeah i'm not the, i'm more of a variety person not like a structured routine person so and i just yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. So it sounds a little bit like, like you're saying that it wasn't painless to fit in both your writing hobby um, and like your, your life and your job. And I think a lot of people can relate with that. Uh, I know back when I was working full time, I was probably working close to 80 hours a week. Like I put, I do my job, but no extra. And then every spare hour, every spare evening squirreled away to my writing hobby. And I think like for you, especially, it sounds like so much of what you write is for you. Like you're doing it because you want to, you know, explore your feelings, talk about something that happened to you, like a very personal essay style, I think. Um, and that sounds like maybe how you've been getting carried away, like writing into, into 2 a.m. in the morning. I can relate so hard because you're putting a lot of your personal self and energy into the stories. Would you, is that right? Definitely. Um, and like I said, it is both an outlet and also hard work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's like anything you enjoy, you enjoy, if you enjoy working out, if you enjoy like dance, it's it's a skill you have to work at and it takes time and effort and it's not 
going to be easy, but like you feel very fulfilled doing this work. And that's how I feel with it. So I 100% agree that it is good to have like on and off periods, whether by force or by choice. It sounds like for you, it was by force, definitely uh, in recent months, which yeah, three articles a week plus a job. Unreal. Um, But so talk to me about what your schedule was like during those crazy news break months. And then what it was like, maybe like a given week of this month. Um, Yeah. How did you spend your time between like your job, your regular life and um, medium slash the side hustle? Yeah. um, Get up. Um, I need to start my day job by at least 9 Mm -hmm. a.m. And to be honest, sometimes it was like 930 some days, but (laughs) uh, like just keep everything balanced there. And then, Mm -hmm. like I said, I might write in the morning after I drop my son off from at school, which is like 745. So I have that little like eight to nine a.m. to write something mm-hmm. or I will sleep at that eight to nine a.m. Like I will take a one hour nap after I just got up because I know if I'm sleep deprived, it's going to affect my work and it's going to affect my ability to write creatively that evening if I want to. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a I'm a night owl. So it's a lot of like once five o'clock rolls around and I'm I'm off of my day job duty, I'm free to write before I cook dinner or, or I'll go to cooking dinner and then like, I'll do something with my kid. Like we'll watch a TV show or we'll go to the park. And then at like eight or nine o'clock, I'm, I'm writing an article that I want to write because it, it feels good. And I, I love to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, like I said, I just kind of throw it in when I feel like it. Mm-hmm. And they say, don't wait for inspiration. And to, to that point, like, for news break, sometimes I forced myself to like find an idea. I had no inspiration. I just had to go what would work for news break that I could post on Medium first, mm-hmm. then to then cross post to news break. Um, and by by forcing myself to think of ideas when I didn't really feel like it, that's when I got like some gems that went viral. Yeah. My first my first story that like went viral to the point where I was like, I've never seen this before was an idea I had never planned to write, but I Newsbreak had made me think of it. And it was what the story about, I had a landlord once who- Oh my who, gosh, sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> Oh my gosh, that- <laughs> Are you familiar with that one? I, yeah, sorry, please, please tell the audience. I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. <laughs> I had a landlord once who was like, very polite, very cool about it, texting me like, I have a, a deal with one of the other tenants and and she doesn't pay rent sometimes because we have sex basically i mean that wasn't his exact words but he's like you're free to like take me up on that offer as well and i was like what do i say and people the comments people were like you you were just being dramatic or like it shouldn't have bothered you he was he was nice about it and i was like well it's your landlord and you're a single mother you get worried, like, will saying no bring a bad consequence? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just super uncomfortable either way. Um, I I said, going, so I will, I will be posting it in the video description for interested readers. It's a, it's a, it's a good story. Sorry, carry on. Thank you. I, I politely declined and everything was fine. Um, and I, I didn't stay too long. Like I stayed for two years there. Um, and my boyfriend lived next door and the landlord also knew that I had a boyfriend. It, it was just a whole thing. Um, yeah. So that was the first one that kind of like really broke out. And then I noticed the, the more, the better your article does, the more it gets viewed, the more you get the weird, crazy comments. So like by the time there's like 20 or 30 comments, like in trickles in like the crazy stuff. Oh yeah. But I, I loved seeing that happen and I thought it was an important issue to talk about because even though that was like eight years ago for me, it still happens, especially with the pandemic mm. and, and landlords being, um, there's been, you know, stories of people going through like sexual harassment and abuse way worse than I did mm-hmm. because there's unemployment and the, the, the owner of the building knows you have nowhere to go or nothing, no job. Mm -hmm. so it was an important issue it was also a personal story I learned something from it 
all of those things made for, I think, something that really resonated with people. And it was a little controversial. It, it was. So, yeah. Yeah, gosh. So I'd love to hear a little bit about, like, what specific strategies did you have, like, around the time of that very first, we'll call it a breakout article, when you, did you decide to invest more time in Medium? Like, did your relationship to Medium change at any point in that regard like w- with balancing your sort of other responsibilities and ha- hobbies on the side I think so I think that that was one of the articles that led to my first you know like almost two thousand dollar income mm-hmm. for a month so I was just and I always wanted to build it up to there but it was it was so consistent it was always like the three to five hundred dollar range which of course definitely helps like you said but it wasn't where I wanted to be I I just be, just, could I, be. yeah yeah, I just, I aspire to, I mean, maybe at some point I won't have to work a day job. Yeah, I just, I want to keep going in that direction. I want to keep building a career here at, on Medium, even if I keep my day job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. So, like, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you faced while, like, building a very lucrative and successful, and it sounds like almost like emotionally healing, but also a little emotionally draining um, hobby. Like, how have you, what have been the hardest things to overcome or that you're still struggling with? I think, I think, like, the time management, like, not having enough hours in the day because I want to do more creatively than I'm even doing with Medium. I want to write a novel and I want to write like a movie script and I want to, I, I honestly aspire to maybe write under um, my own name and like write about like personal things that like I can share among people I know. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would be a totally separate thing. Yeah. And it's probably like wanting to do too much, but like what, that's one of the challenges is just like, we all want to do like the fun creative things and we, don't have enough time for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and another challenge for me, which I I eventually overcame, was getting into publications that have like the strict guidelines and the high quality stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think there was a point where it was a little bit easier maybe to get into like the writing cooperative. And then recently they've kind of like, um, I guess tweaked things to the point they like like consistency among all of their articles so I'm trying to remember like what formatting guidelines and rules does the writing cooperative need and Mm -hmm. and what about like fearless she wrote that's one of my all-time favorite pubs to fantastic yeah Yeah, they're amazing and so so different like large publications that that take that publish very like high quality stories sometimes have different rules Mm -hmm. I need like a chart like if I want to publish with this one, like, is it um, like what title case are we using for headlines and all that? Yeah, yeah it's one um, of those things that's like, it's so, it's so time consuming, but Medium seems like allergic to actually doing anything to standardize those publications. And it's frustrating because I don't know about you, but I find publications matter so much to the success of my stories. Like finding the right audience for the right story is a huge part of getting those breakout slash viral hits for me, at least. How about you? My rabbits are making noise. <laughs> Can you show me? Can you turn huh? the camera? Just for fun, just to see them. Oh! So, <laughs> yeah, so I can definitely see how like just not just like the individual publication standards, but the overall trends of what is and isn't allowed on Medium. It's a whole time commitment. Like it's another thing to keep track of. It's not just like, I just, I know when I was working a full-time job, it was so hard to keep track of what was okay and what wasn't. And now that I'm like a hundred percent immersed in it all the time, I understand those trends a lot better, but it's so much harder when you have like so many other considerations to be keeping track of at the same time to know like what's the latest on medium slash medium publications. And that's, that's one of the reasons why your videos are, are so incredibly helpful to people because you're all on top of like what happened this week. That's totally different from whenever medium first started they give and, me um, so much work they keep me so busy <laughs> there's always new stuff happening <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, I love um, it. there there was definitely a pivot where you could write more explicit like 
detailed content and and if it had an educational component it would get distributed but like Mm -hmm. that doesn't really happen anymore it's it's more like pg-13 or or pg to get distributed sexuality Mm -hmm. so i honestly don't get distributed in sex anymore i I get i had no idea yeah my top yeah it's more my top reading status is um like this happened to me and relationships okay so i did pivot with like medium pivots like you you advise and Mm -hmm. Um, I just had my very first, I think I heard you talk about this first, my very first decurated article, which was the one about snooping through my husband's phone. Oh, and, no. Um, what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was, so doing, it was doing so well in four days. And it was like, it was curated. And then four days of it, like climbing, 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 it was decurated. I don't know. I'll never know That's why ch- they do they will never tell us why, which is so frustrating. But yeah, I know when like you're relying on it, especially when you're relying on like a side hustle to supplement your income, it can be so hard to play by those whims and like have to keep track of the wind changes. Um, For anybody who's watching who doesn't know what curation slash distribution is, Medium has this this, um, sort of method of even if somebody doesn't follow you, they might follow a topic that you write in. So for example, um, I (laughs) recently called all of my followings people, I, everyone who I was following. Um, but I was still recommended your story because I follow the the topics that you Holly write in. Um, so even though it's, it's a really good tool for beginner writers to start building an audience um, of people who are interested in what they have to say. Although recent trends indicate that curation might not matter as much anymore. Just, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. You never know with medium. Um, but yeah, those challenges are really interesting. I, so I would love to hear then what's the flip side. Like, I know a lot of people think that they're probably listening to all this and they're like, that's a huge sacrifice. Like I don't have those hours, but what has made it worth it to you? Other than the, other than the money, which I will say is considerable and a worthy sort of incentive on its own, but like what other opportunities have come your way or highlights? Right. Right. Other than the income, which you said has like helped my me and my family so much um like just having a creative outlet which I know sounds like a cliche but it's 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 my therapy Mm -hmm. but also um meeting people who are fellow creatives that's been a wonderful opportunity that I never would have done if I hadn't found medium um also being syndicated in other blogs like like Mama Mia is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a website called sexpert.com who mm-hmm. was really great to work with. They would just syndicate and they provided my, a link back to my medium. So you okay. can draw in like an audience that way. Um, and I, I, along with Shannon and Ashley, we were interviewed <laughs> for um, Red Table Talk, which is the, I didn't exactly know what it was, but it's on a Facebook watch show and Jada Pinkett Smith is the host yeah um, and it was all about me and my husband because I wrote about my in-laws and their crazy politics conspiracy theories and all that stuff and he was like I don't know if I want to interview I don't know if I want to talk about my family I'm like that's totally reasonable can you just interview and see if they uh see how you like them see what you think after you interview for a spot on the show and if you don't want to do it then we won't do it Mm -hmm. so he interviewed by himself after I had interviewed by myself with with the producers and then he was like on board because he was like he liked them he was totally into the idea we had reservations but we were like we're only going to talk about things we're comfortable with blah blah blah. and then it was like two weeks of madness where the producers were like okay we want you to come on the show it'll be through zoom and I'm like, this is amazing. Let's do it. And then they kept changing the date. They're like, okay, it'll be it'll be this Friday. Okay, no, it'll be Monday. Okay, it's going to be next Thursday. And I was like taking off work. Like mm-hmm. it was so set. Like they yeah. were like, it's going to be in two days. I took off work and then it was changed. And then they were, then they wanted us to fly in um, to LA and do it at Jada Smith's house. Incredible opportunity. And yeah. I just, I, get 
my shit together and my anxiety together enough to be like, yeah, let me fly there tomorrow with my son, with my husband. And I, I feel like I kind of, anyways, I was going to say, I feel like I missed out, but I, I almost think it wasn't my fault either. No, because there no, were, I don't I, think anybody would. That sounds so stressful and so hectic. Yeah, but they were like, that's fine if you don't fly in. Let's do it on Zoom. And then the day after they said, that's fine. They said, we can't, we don't have enough to put together. <laughs> so we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this episode right now. And I'm like, that's fine. Let me just get back to writing. <laughs> wow. What too a much. roller coaster. So, I mean, the opportunity, definitely amazing. The fulfillment of that opportunity, crappy, not by you, definitely by them. That is so... Yeah. That's so inconsiderate. That's such a shame. Well, that's no fault of media. Like media really gives you when you're consistent and when you're putting out your best work and when you're like building what you want to build there, there's opportunities for people to find you to do other amazing things. And that's, that's a big bonus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if those things don't work other reasons (laughs) but the opportunity was present yeah even if it did go a little pear-shaped but no that's so cool I it's fantastic I mean I can't even imagine being reached out to by like I had heard of uh Jada Pinkett Smith's Red Table show um that's just that's such an unreal opportunity and all because you never know who's reading on Medium and that's like I always say like you could be writing on WordPress sure but on Medium there's an existing audience of people who have opportunities to give out and yeah, like, like you never know when you're going to get that chance, which is so cool. Um, all right. So I know that like ideally medium would become, well, actually, I don't know. Ideally would medium become your full-time job? Like if things started going perfectly? Yeah, I don't know. And that's because I know I'm scared of like uncertainty and change. Mm-hmm. Um, when I've had, I had so much of that freelancing that I, I did not respond well to. Yeah. And, um, with a steady day job, I'm not afraid of that. And I, I think it might be different if you don't have kids because you do like, you're able to, you know, have that freedom, um, to, to work, to change jobs if you want to, or to quit your job if you want to not like, not to say that if you have kids, you can freely quit your job. That's not it at all. But I I just want that stability for like health insurance, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. um, It's important. I would say like, I I would like to keep doing medium to see if it allows for other opportunities. For one thing, I would like to um, be a novelist and write fiction. And I think maybe it could help with publishing your book, um, Mm -hmm. just like by getting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. So whether I work with a traditional publisher or or just independently publish um, fiction, I would promote on medium. I would try to build an audience there for that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, I just like to have fun and, and write really difficult issues. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I would love to hear. Yeah. I, I, I understand. I think part of the reason I was able to make that change personally was because yeah, I'm, I have like a lot of privilege personally. I'm here living at home with my parents. I have no kids. I, I don't have any debt. Like, I, I took zero risks in going fully freelance, whereas I understand most people are not in that position. So it's it's considerations that you do have to take into account. Um, and I think healthcare is a very real one, um, especially during yeah. the pandemic. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah. Like, what are your plans for future future work on Medium then? Are you going to just sort of keep doing what you're doing? Which, I mean, apparently it's working apart from your one decurated article. So rude. Um, but yeah, how do you plan to sort of progress on Medium? Um, sure. I I do hope to keep doing what I'm doing and I hope to keep progressively putting out better, better and better stories. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think that's really like the heart of the matter is that I enjoy writing and I want to do it and being more successful with it as far as like income and, and other opportunities and just like, it just feels good to, to write a story other people talk about like they they'll that's why I I know we like are different I do read comments because it's like a dialogue and and the important issues that I talk about I talk I write about them because I want to talk about them Mm -hmm. and if people disagree with me I I don't mind going like 
why do you disagree? And here's why I disagree with you. Mm-hmm. Like I'm very opinionated in that way. And I, I enjoy that aspect of as much as it's, it's funny that I write under a pen name and I don't share my stories with my friends, but I am very like open and honest with my friends. I do talk about like whatever with my friends, um, mm-hmm. except for my blogging career. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I do want to keep doing what I'm doing. I want to keep doing more. If, if I had like, I don't know, if I had a very steady income that was doing better than my day job, I would consider leaving my day job to see like where else the wind takes me. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not there right now. So <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna keep creating and I very much am enjoying that. Mm-hmm. And like stuff like this, like interviewing on your channel, which I've been watching since day one, basically. Wow. I feel like, I feel like that was a huge opportunity. I'm a, I'm starstruck. <laughs> well, thank you for thank you for doing this. I feel like I have so much to learn from from writers like you, like both in terms of just how to balance all the different priorities. Because for me, like creation, I it is my number one priority, and it's so interesting to hear about people who who for various reasons it can't be. There are other considerations to take into account. Um, so yeah, thank you for for hopping on here. Um, I have more questions. That sounded like I was wrapping up, but I'm not. <laughs> I have more. Um, so I do have just yeah, just a few more questions then. So for people who are in your position who whether they you know are currently in a job or just started a new job and they're thinking about whether they have the bandwidth to take on a new side hustle specifically writing what advice would you give those people um i would say try to write consistently at the same time forgive yourself if you don't have the bandwidth to write anything that day um sometimes it's like writing an article a week, like maybe you could set a small goal, write an article a week, take three days to write that article, like write it for a couple hours, like in the evening, write it on your lunch break. Like, I mean, work on it. Like, don't feel like you have to finish it in one session. Um, and, and honestly, you, you, someone with a kid, I mean, I, I'm privileged too, because I have one teenager who's very easy and wonderful. Um, a a mother or a father with more than one kid I don't know I don't know how that works (laughs) that's that's incredible um uh, because I know people do it they work and they have multiple kids there are enough hours in the day as much as I work on my writing on the side I have plenty of time for Netflix like way too much I will I will lay there and just binge watch stuff it feels good because I I need to like mentally rest. That's part of writing. That's part of your side hustle. You have to take breaks. So do your day job, take an hour or two hours or however many you can stand to write, to do your side hustle and give yourself like breaks. Yeah. Plenty of them. Yeah. That's (laughs) fantastic advice. Um, Yeah. Taking, I think, taking breaks is probably the one that I think is the, I mean, all of it is fantastic, but that's what I would really hone in on for, for struggling to balance writers. Um, because it's so many people think that like there's a gold rush on medium or whatever other platform. And that if they don't maximize on it right now, right today, this week, if they don't get into that publication, if they don't write that viral story, that it's gone forever. But like every day and every year, people were saying that in 2018 when I joined. And I mean, since then, there have been so many writers who joined and were working on it, like on the side, just like you and actually surpassed, you know, me, (laughs) which is like, I love to see that. I love to see people who have been starting later and doing better, because I think that just proves the potential is still there. And you can, you have the allowance, you can take breaks when you need to, you don't have to be a content machine. Like, I think that's so cool. Yeah. And I mean, to another point there is like, if you do hustle, like I hustled with the three stories a week for four months, which honestly I wouldn't recommend, but like, if you want to hustle for a month or two, you will build momentum and you will build more of a following so that you can scale back and still like bring in the same views or income mm-hmm. because you, you've built your readership. Yeah. So there is like a, like give hustle, 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 give yourself some time off because you've built something and that can keep going. 
Yeah. Like your royalties can be going from your backlog and it, it just works beautifully sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't, but <laughs> yeah, well, no, I think, I think it's worth, and especially like if you're already sort of trying to, what's the word cultivate your time. Like if you're careful about your energy, it is possible to overdo it. And unless you give yourself that time off and that sort of grace to have a break and just not create for a little bit or create less. Um, it's much harder to actually come back and keep doing what you love. So I think, yeah, just having the bandwidth to, or the, the awareness to say, yeah, I can stop. I, I don't have to keep going at this breakneck pace. And if I do, it will drain me utterly dry of creative energy. You can do that. And it's yeah. especially important to do that. Um, for me anyway, when I was, a, when I was still working full time. Yeah, you, I mean, you said it perfectly. Exactly. That was fantastic advice. Really interesting to hear about like what you're planning for the future, especially because I think as medium changes, it's going to be really interesting to see. Um, like, yeah, how, how you sort of pivot to deal with those shifts with also like the full time job and the the family. Um, I would. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I forgot. A, um, I forgot a thing for the future. That's actually very like dear to my heart. And I forgot about it, which is like podcasting. Yes. So, yeah. Talk to me about that. Um, yeah. You, um, you had a video recently about like doing more than, more than medium. And my thing is, is podcasting, um, not having to be on video cause it's not my favorite, but mm -hmm. I love to talk. Uh, I feel like I need help with speaking more eloquently. So like the podcast offers all these opportunities. I have not figured out how to monetize it. So like, if I keep going with, it's called the sex curious podcast, which I love to interview people. So mm -hmm. if I can like find a way to monetize that, I would, I would keep going with that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. That's fantastic. That's it. Cause I do think, I guess like for you, the challenge is then how do you add? Cause I do recommend to people don't put all your eggs in the medium basket because it's hard to keep track of what's going on. So how do you plan or how have you, added that extra stream without like, where did you find the time and the energy? 100%. It was only because of the pandemic, probably. Mm -hmm. Like, I I would never want I would, I hate the pandemic. It's terrible. I lost, um, I lost a family member. Um, but it, the only reason that I was able I had more free time. It was it, it, it sucked. So mm -hmm. I was like, what can I do? I'm depressed. Um, everything is horrible and the world is ending and I'm losing family members. What can I do to mm -hmm. like get out of this uh, mm -hmm. emotional? It, it was horrible. Yeah. So I was like, let's start um, a fun podcast that has no pressure to make money. I can just like talk to people and, and be like funny and still talk about important things. Um, and I'm, I'm not driving to the office. I'm working from home. So I'm saving time on like commute and I'm not, I'm saving time on getting ready in the morning. Like I, I never work like this. I always like wear my pajamas to work. So it, I had time to do it. And, and that's what drew me to it is just like doing something fun without worrying, like without the pressure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and that brings me to my final question, which is, where can people find your content, your podcast, your medium? Do you have a newsletter, Instagram? Give us all the links. Medium.com. Look for Holly Bradshaw. And I spend a lot of time on Twitter. Um, I'm on there. I think it's so good for like writers, especially like erotica, sex, like all the like stuff that you're not really like it's Twitter to me seems like the most lenient place for like whatever you want to write about. Yeah. And there are so many writers on there. And it's, it's been a wonderful community there. And mm -hmm. um, the podcast is on like Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, like all the places. And it's called the Sex Curious Podcast. Yes. And that's um, about it right now. Sorry, I'm just collecting all the links now uh, before I lose them. Podcast here, podcast medium and Twitter. Fantastic. Well, Holly, thank you so, so much for your time, sharing all your insights and what you're going through. I know a lot of people are in a similar position or, you know, hoping to be. So this was just absolutely chock full of valuable information. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any questions for me or for Holly, pop them in the, ch in the comment box below um, and I will recruit Holly to come and answer them if you have any good ones. And yeah, until we see each other again, happy writing everyone. Bye.